All right, let's take a look at this demo LabVIEW project for the motor adapter for NI MyRio. I have the adapter plugged into MXP port A. The Digilent geared motor is attached here as motor zero, and I'm using a nine volt battery connected here. You can use any DC supply between six volts and 16 volts. The VI is already running. Here you have the controls for the motor speed and direction. The encoder feedback is registered here. You see the counter value as well as the counter direction indicator, and you can also reset the counter with this control. Here I'm also displaying the feedback from the motor that shows the waveform for motor current and motor voltage. Well, let's try starting the motor up. Now we see a little action on the waveform displays. The motor is not yet turning. Whoop, well, there it goes. The motor is now turning clockwise. Here you can experiment with different pulse width modulated frequencies, and you can observe the changes that occur in both the current and voltage waveforms present at the motor. Let's try raising the motor speed here. You'll see that the counter is increasing at a more rapid pace. I've flipped the direction here. Let's get the motor started again. Okay, now the motor is turning counterclockwise and we see that the counts are decreasing. I'd like to show you another way of using the counts display here. When the reset button is held down, then the counter resets on every loop pass. And presently in the VI, that's every 100 milliseconds. In this way, the counts can be used as a form of speed indicator. Now I'd like to draw your attention to this indicator. It shows the number of samples that are necessary to acquire five PWM cycles, both for current and voltage. I'll show you how increasing the pulse width modulated signal frequency automatically causes the number of samples acquired to be reduced. In this way, you know that you're always collecting five cycles. All right, I'm going to stop the VI at this point. Now, suppose you wanted to study these waveforms in a little bit more detail. Here are some tools that you can use to zoom in on the information and display it in various ways. Let's get back to the original scaling. I'll try focusing on this piece right here. You can also see the individual samples, or you can see the samples connected by straight lines. You can also zoom in and zoom out and so on. And now that you have a little more familiarity with the front panel, let's explore the block diagram. I'm using three Express VIs that are all based on the default MyRio FPGA personality. Let's take a look at the first one. And that's the PWM Express VI, Pulse Width Modulation. Let me double click this to show you what's inside. Each of the MXP connectors has three PWM outputs, and the MSP connector has two. The frequency and duty cycle can be set either externally, as I'm doing here, or you can set them internally. That is, if you choose set constant, then you can hard code that value in and remove the input. Next, let's look at the encoder Express VI. I'll double click it again and you have one each on the MXP connectors and then two on the MSP connector. And by default, we're using the quadrature phase interpretation of the signals A and B coming back from the motor. And the third Express VI is the digital output. That's located right here. Let's double click that one and DIO6 is associated with the direction control for motor zero, and I've given it the custom channel name to make it a little bit easier to remember that fact. All right, let's take a look at some of the coding details. Here I'm converting the duty cycle expressed in percent into a value between zero and one, 
and then inverting the sense of it because the motor adapter uses an active low enable. And here's the control for the PWM frequency. Note that 40 hertz is the lowest you can go. Here's the control for direction and resetting the encoder counts value. And those two indicators are for counter value and counter direction. Everything else in the VI is associated with the waveform display. I'm using two waveform graphs for that purpose. The heart of this is the analog input. It's located right here. And let's double click this. The current is on AI0 and the voltage is on AI2. And again, I've given those custom channel names to make it more clear on the block diagram. The analog input is encased in a timed loop. And that's located right here. Double click on this portion and I've selected the one megahertz clock and the uh, loop timing, that is the number of microseconds elapsed per iteration, is set externally by this constant 50. Everything else in this zone then is figuring out how many samples need to be acquired to, uh, to acquire n periods, or 5 periods, as I have it set up right now. This value then is compared to the iteration number within the timed loop, and when that value reaches the required number of samples, then the loop stops. I'm using auto indexing technique here, and this takes each of the samples that are acquired on each pass and forms them into an array of values. Both the motor current and voltage sit on a precision 2.5 volt offset, therefore I'm subtracting that, and now motor current is displayed in amps. Here I'm scaling up the motor voltage by a factor of 10, so now it's displaying the motor voltage in volts. And to wrap up, I'm looking at the air clusters. I'm using the merge errors technique to bring these all together at one point. That's where it's located in the sub palette. Bring these together all at the same point, and that is then fed out to the simple air handler on its way to the reset my Rio sub VI. Any error causes the loop to terminate, as of course does the stop button on the front panel. The loop is paced at 100 milliseconds per loop cycle.